dear students in this lecture we will be dealing on the circle diagram for the induction machine circle diagram is a performance prediction tool and we can predict the performance or we can evaluate the performance of the machine under any operating condition that is for different load conditions in order to understand the principle of circle diagram let us consider a series rl circuit and the reactance is considered to be a constant the resistance is a variable one if we apply a constant voltage constant frequency supply and vary the resistance the current tipple will be falling on a semi circle and the diameter of the semi circle will be v by xl and that is given with the diagram the rl circuit and the corresponding diagram which shows the locus of current for drawing the circle diagram we require the short circuit as well as open circuit or null load test as well as the block rotor test results isc is the block rotor test current and it is the current corresponding to the normal voltage of the machine and we have isc as a power factor angle on short circuit test or block rotor test and we have i0 the power factor angle of null load test and i0 is the null load current in order to draw the circle diagram in the vertical direction we will be drawing the voltages and in perpendicular to the voltage you can draw of that is in the horizontal direction and by using a scale for the current we can draw isc lagging by an angle phi sc from the voltage and i not lagging by an angle phi zero from the voltage with the same scale we can draw a parallel line from the tip of i not in parallel to the line of now as the next step we will have to join o dash a o o dash corresponds to the null load current and o dash a corresponds to the the secondary current or the current that is equivalent current corresponding to the rotor current on the stator side so the vector sum of o o dash and o dash a will be the total current o a we will have to draw a perpendicular bc to o dash a such that the point a will be bisecting o dash a c will be the intersecting point on the line o dash g with the radius o dash c and considering c as the center we can complete the semi circle that is shown that is o dash a g in the figure if you drop a perpendicular from o dash to the line of the length o dash q will be the null load active component of current that is iw which corresponds to the friction and windage losses or the constant losses in the case of induction machine or we can consider o dash q is the active component of the current o o dash that is i not now let us draw a perpendicular from a to the line of af will be the active component of the current oa that is isc from that if you reduce the length ef that is equal to o dash q the rest of the length ae will be giving the component which corresponds to the total stator and rotor copper loss or we, to another scale that is called power scale we can consider the length a to be equivalent to the total copper loss that is for both stator and rotor 
the length ae can be divided into rotor copper loss and stator copper loss that is ad is, will be equivalent to rotor copper loss and de will be equivalent to stator copper loss and the total copper loss will be given by the length ae in order to find out the point d we will have to divide the line ae if it is a case of slip ring induction motor it can be divided as ad divided by de is equal to r2 divided by k square divided by r1 is equal to r2 dash divided by r1 if it is squirrel cage induction motor we will have to find out the length for de considering the stator copper loss which can be obtained by measuring the stator resistance the line o dash d is called torque line or rotor input line the line o dash a is called output line in order to obtain the maximum power input that is possible in the case of the induction machine we have considered we can draw a tangent to the semicircle in such a way that it will be parallel to the horizontal line of that is given by n dash p dash f the length p dash p will be the maximum power input In order to obtain the maximum torque condition, we will have to consider the torque line or rotor input line. Draw a tangent to the semicircle, which will be in parallel to the torque line O dash D, and the tangent is given as L dash Q dash D, and the length that is given by Q Q dash will be the maximum torque. in order to obtain the maximum output from the machine we will have to draw a tangent to the semicircle which will be parallel to the output line o dash a and the tangent is given as k dash s dash a dash the length of line s s dash to the scale will be providing the maximum output from the machine the entire circle diagram is shown we have stator and co rotor copper losses the total copper loss then the torque line output line we can find out what will be the maximum power of input what will be the maximum power output the maximum torque we will consider an example for which the load current is given as i1 the length oh will be taken to a scale and we will be constructing the circle diagram and the voltage is given by ov and for the current i1 the motor input can be obtained by root 3 v into nh that will be the total input that is given to the motor nh corresponds to the length of the active component of current that is i1 cos phi for nh we will have to consider the scale that is taken for i1 itself that is the length oh will be having a correspondence to i1 the same should be taken for nh the constant loss similarly we can find out as root 3 v nm there also for nm we will have to consider the same scale as that we had for the current similarly stator copper loss can be obtained by root 3 v into ml rotor input power will be root 3 v into lh rotor copper loss will be root 3 v into lk and motor output power will be root 3 v into kh for output power we will have to consider the portion above the output line 
for the rotor input we will have to consider the portion above the rotor input line or the torque line for the stator copper loss and rotor copper loss we will have to consider the portions corresponding to ad and de for the current that is given now to find out the efficiency we can take the ratio of hk and hn hk corresponds to the output and hn corresponds to the input the portion above the output line that is hk corresponds to output and the entire length the vertical length hn corresponds to the total input in order to find out the slip s remember the equation rotor copper loss is equal to S into the air gap power or S into the rotor input. From the same, we can calculate slip S. In order to find out the power factor cos phi 1, that is equal to NH divided by OH, that is same as I1 cos phi divided by I1. When we draw the circle diagram, we will have to consider the scales. That is, all the currents should be having the same scale. Whatever is taken to draw the initial current, that is maybe I0 or I1, should be followed for all the vertical lengths. From the circle diagram, we can evaluate or we can predetermine the efficiency and the performance of the machine for different loading condition. Go through the slides several times. Hope you will be able to understand the same. Thank you.